I am Jorgen Randers. I am a professor emeritus of climate strategy at BI, the Norwegian Business School. Limits to growth warned about global overshoot and collapse, basically meaning that there would be too many people on the planet and too high consumption of resources, too much pollution emitted, too much land use uh, in order to make this sustainable on a finite, tiny planet. Limits hoped that man would avoid continued growth in the footprint. Uh, 50 years after, we see that that did not materialize. The world has continued to expand during the 50 years. However, uh, we have not seen collapse. You know, the society has not, in a way, reduced the well-being of people in a dramatic manner. So what I spoke about is what is likely to happen over the next 50 years and could anything be done in order to make the world sustainable, meaning that we have just enough people and just high enough consumption of resources per person to make the thing viable uh, on the finite planet. The most important problem uh, we are facing in the rich world is climate change. The poor world has even bigger problems in vast poverty that needs to be solved. But from our point of view, climate is the, the serious thing. The simplest solution to solve the climate problem is to stop using coal, oil and gas. You know, the burning of coal, oil and gas for electricity and heat purposes uh, leads to 70% of the emissions. So this one policy, you know, replacing coal, oil and gas with windmills, sun, gas with CCS, you know, will solve the whole problem. And this is the one thing that needs to be done during the next 30 years. The main role of technology is essentially to lower the cost of the transition. Uh, but since the, the transition will cost, irrespective, you know, it is more expensive to run a clean world than it is to run a dirty world. Uh, the main challenge is to create democratic agreement on what should be done. We, need, we know what needs to be done and it is more expensive than doing nothing. And so someone has to pay and society has to decide that we want to do this and also decide whether we ask the rich to pay, which I think is what we should, or whether we print money or whether we borrow money that we don't plan to pay back. So it is in the social sciences where in institutional development we really need to get things done. I think that during the last 50 years, uh, the, one of the main uh, steps ahead has been the fact that we have moved from a situation where everyone thought that this problem can be solved by individual voluntary action. If you just start sorting your garbage or driving a slightly fewer kilometers, that would solve the sustainability crisis. Uh, we are now 50 years down the line and uh, I think the understanding that we need social transformation, that we really need uh, collective action involving all partners of society in order to solve this problem, I think that that is rising. I think it is rising much too slowly. You know, we're now in the process of finally getting rid of Reaganism and Thatcherism, you know, the liberalization idea, which means that a small state is better than a big state into the realization that we need a strong state in order to get the world sustainable within a short period of time. So if I were to give one piece of advice, it would be for people to realize that what needs to be done is not profitable from the investor point of view. So that the real challenge ahead is to make it profitable and the only way to do that is through a strong state. So collective action 
is necessary in order to change the frame conditions for the corporate and individual response.